In August 2021, for the very first time, scientists broke the barrier in animal-human communication. They said hello to a whale, and the whale said hello right back. Now we might finally be able to do what we've always dreamt of doing, communicate with the non-human beings that share this planet with us. But if the animals tell us we're fucking everything up, will we finally listen? Will speaking with animals finally help us save planet Earth? the tropes. Loak befriends a Tulkun, the whales of Pandora, communicates with him and then saves him from his persecution from the evil human capitalists who want to hunt him to make a profit. Snow White befriends wooden animals and then proceeds to live a peaceful life in a woodland cottage, helping others. Tarzan is raised by and can communicate with other animals and then saves them from the English explorers slash colonists that come to trap and hunt them. These characters all have one thing in common, they can communicate with animals. And because of that, they often do good things, they live life simply and peacefully, and they often help the environment and other life forms, especially the life forms they can communicate with in the first place. And though these might seem like far off fairy tales compared to our reality, humans have actually been communicating with animals for a very long time. In fact, you could say that human animal communication began when we first started domesticating animals. Dogs were the first animals we domesticated around 20,000 to 40,000 years ago by sharing meat with them at hunting grounds in periods when we had it in excess, thus fostering a relationship based on mutualism and communication. And as dogs progressively became domesticated, we managed to refine our methods of communicating with them, teaching them commands, and now even teaching them to read up to 20 words. And dogs aren't the only animals we have domesticated and communicated with. Camels, donkeys and horses can all understand some verbal commands, and I've even seen videos of cats pushing buttons to try and communicate what they want. Yet telling dogs to sit or horses to move faster is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to human-animal communication. We still don't really know what our pets are thinking, if they're thinking much of anything at all, and though we can understand their visual cues, such as a wagging tail or pinned back ears, we still can't have much of an actual conversation with our furry friends. When it comes to wildlife though, our history of communication takes a surprising journey. Take birds. Being bird-brained is often used to insinuate that someone's a bit dumb, but birds are actually pretty big-brained. Alex the parrot, for example, was an African grey parrot who was studied by a psychologist for 30 years. He had learned over a hundred English words, could understand and communicate how many objects were in a set, and could even identify and name objects such as will and wood. And Alex the parrot wasn't the only big-brained bird who could communicate in ways that was understandable to humans. Ravens actually use beak and hand gestures to communicate with each other, which are kind of akin to human hand gestures, like me, apparently I gesticulate a lot in my videos so sorry about that, it's the slightly French side coming out there. And even seagulls can communicate with us through eye contact. Research has shown that they know not to steal our food if we're looking directly at them. And in the world of mammals, chimpanzees, orangutans, gorillas and bonobos have all been part of various communicatory experiments, such as Coco the gorilla, who could apparently speak over a thousand words of sign language and form complex phrases with those words. Though some scientists say that videos of Coco signing were actually pieced together and prompted by researchers in the background giving him clues on what to say. Another ape, a bonobo called Kamsi, could communicate with a keyboard of 348 symbols and apparently could understand over 3,000 words. However, many scientists critique these experiments and say that these apes were simply knowing how to utilise um, sounds or symbols to get what they wanted and the communication most of the time didn't move past just communicating their needs or emotional states. In addition, all of these animals were trained and experimented on since birth in a captivity. Until recently, we had never come as far as breaking the human-animal communication barrier with a wild animal. But in 2021, this all changed. A team of scientists managed to communicate with a female adult humpback whale of southeast Alaska. Unlike the experiments and animals I've just spoken about, the scientists didn't try to teach the whale in a language they could understand, but actually tried to communicate with the whale in the whale's own language. They played a recording of a humpback greeting call to the whale using an underwater speaker. The whale then answered back, greeting them in turn. And this conversation lasted 20 minutes, with the scientists and whale greeting each other over and over again, until the whale finally disengaged and swam away. We said hi, 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 hi. You know, next time you want to say how are you, uh, what's up, any good fish, whatever. 
In other words, uh, more of a vocabulary, and so we want to develop the software for that. If this is really the first human-to-world animal conversation we've had, in a language that we know the target species completely understands, then is this the dawn of a new era for us? Whales are, after all, extremely intelligent animals. We think some whales might have the capacity for vocal signatures or names complex social structures, the ability to create tools such as bubble nets to catch fish, and some have even been shown to mimic human language. Now that we've finally broken the barrier of communication between us and a highly intelligent wild animal species, could we eventually befriend these whales as Loak did to the Tulkun in Avatar? Well, I think that if our conversations with whales did progress to more than just greetings, whales would have a lot to tell us. After all, we've hunted and massacred them, we've depleted their food sources through overfishing, we've littered their homes with plastics through endless overconsumerism, and we're warming and acidifying the oceans through our endless burning of fossil fuels. The real question is, if whales did ask us to stop, to leave them and their families alone, to stop putting so much pressure on their food sources, to stop boiling the oceans and stop throwing our waste in their backyard, would we listen? If the animals of the world told us to stop our madness, would we become the Disney princesses we've written about? The ones who listened to woodland creatures and lived simple, cooperative and peaceful lives? Well, I don't think we would. For one simple reason. Why would we listen to animals when we don't even listen to each other? Humanity has done its fair share of horrors over the years. War, famines, disease, colonialism, slavery, genocides. But in the last few decades, technology has meant these horrors are even more apparent than they were in previous generations. Even in the last 10 years, technology has changed so drastically that we've arrived at an era where those of us in the global north can no longer hide from the horrors happening across the world. The genocide in Palestine has been titled by many as the first ever live streamed genocide in history. For the first time, perhaps in human history, every one of us with internet access is faced with the very real horrors of what's happening across the world. And it's not just the genocide in Palestine that is being live streamed for the world to see. The violence in Congo, Sudan and Ukraine, the class disparity and inequality in countries across the world, and the increasing droughts, fires, floods, famines and displacements being caused by climate change are just some of the horrors that are being communicated to us daily through pictures and videos on our phone screens. Sure, the media in many countries, especially here in the UK, is mostly funded by people who don't really want us to see uh, the horrors being perpetuated by our profit-driven system, meaning a lot of what we do see is obscured or altered or hidden from us. And the algorithms of Zuckerberg's Metaverse or Musk's Twitter slash X means that the majority of this content is suppressed. That's a whole other video in itself, but I'm sure many other YouTubers have made a whole video on that subject. But still, even with this added suppression, the images and videos of the horrors happening across the world still manage to find a way of getting through. There is no ignoring them. Humans across the world have been crying out for a change from the exploitative systems we've been living under for many years. But now most of us across the world can directly see, hear and communicate with those living under the worst impacts of colonialism, capitalism and climate change. And yet still, most of us don't listen. Human cries are falling on deaf ears. So why would the cries of animals be any different? Perhaps communication, whether from humans or animals, can only get us so far. This is quite controversial because, well, firstly my main job is in communications and YouTube itself is a form of communicating. And literally every other LinkedIn post I see is banging on about how glorious communication is if it's done right. But over the past few years I've just kept hearing the same trope. Communication is what's going to save us all. We just need to grab people's attention with X cause. We need to show them X more directly. No, we need to make X more subtle. We need to show them X in a way which is fun, serious, engaging, entertaining, horrifying, extreme, palatable, irresistible. Ah, the endless question of marketing. How do we market climate change or genocide enough to make people really care? To get through the noise of everything else that is being marketed at us constantly. Maybe that's why animals would save us then? Maybe if a whale told us straight up we were fucking the planet, it would cut through all the human digital noise that is flooding our senses? Eh, I don't think communicating with whales is what's going to save us at this point. On a side note, Coco the gorilla told politicians to hurry up and save the planet for COP26 and that didn't really seem to work. Because we're just being bombarded by everything. 
constantly. Everywhere we look, there's another advertisement, another ploy to grab our attention, another cause that needs supporting. It's overwhelming. And when most of us have jobs and bills to pay and families and friends to maintain relationships with and support, any spare time we are left with, we probably want to spend time recovering from the effects of capitalism. Besides, how can we choose just one cause in the endless sea of causes to support? With limited time and money, how do we choose whether we're going to donate money to a family in Palestine, or give food to our local food bank, or funds to stop yet another species from becoming extinct? How do we choose whether to spend time organising with our local climate group, going to a protest or reading a book about ecological collapse, or simply just resting after a busy week? It's impossible. There are too many problems to fix. Too many causes to donate to. Too many problems that need our attention. However we communicate, it will most likely fall on deaf ears. Because people are tired and disempowered, they're tired of the system, disempowered by all the many atrocities to people and planet they cannot fix. We need something that goes beyond just more communication. We need a system change, one that empowers people to want to work directly on building a better world, on fixing the solutions their communities are facing. Once we have control and agency over our surroundings and our communities, once our needs and desires are met through usufruct, mutual aid, and free association, once we stop being mindfucked and marketed at by endless corporations and causes, then and only then will we maybe have more time and energy and love to listen to other life forms. But first things first, we need to listen to the humans around the world right now. Until human cries no longer fall on deaf ears, then whales don't have a chance. Maybe someday though, in a solar punk, utopic future Earth, we can all be the woodland Disney princesses or whale befriending Na'vi our heart's most desire. Or not. You know, no shade if you don't want to chat with animals. Their thoughts could be terrifying wormholes of answers to all of life's most meaningless and meaningful questions. We just don't know. Personally, I feel like crabs know all the answers to the universe, you know what I mean? So, what do you think? Could breaking the barriers of human-animal communication help us out even just a little? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. <laughs>